Happy New Year, everyone. I don't know about you, but when a new year rolls around, I tend to reflect on the previous year and think about where I might have wasted some time or missed some opportunities. I know that can be a, a negative thing to think about regrets, but um, I think it's important to, to consider how we spend our time and also whether or not we are living fully into the life that God has intended for us and prepared for us? Are we really connecting with God in a way that, that fulfills our lives and enables us to know that abundant life in Jesus Christ? And, and what can we do about it? So let me tell you a parable that may uh, illustrate what I'm talking about here. There was once a worker in a office building, uh, someone who you might even characterize as a workaholic. And one day, all the power went out in the building. And so, uh, unable to work, she went outside, took a walk, and ended up at a small cafe nearby, uh, sitting outside, and uh, ran into an acquaintance. Now, this was a person she knew but didn't know well, uh, not necessarily someone she wanted to get to know better, but an acquaintance nonetheless. So they sat there and spent some time uh, just killing time with small talk. Well, uh, it got to be time for her to check back and to see if the power was back on at the office, and she got up to leave and noticed a few yards away, sitting on a bench, was her best friend in the whole world, the person she most loved spending time with, uh, someone she saw way too rarely because of her work schedule, and that person had been just yards away, and that person, that best friend forever, uh, was the one she would have much rather spent her time with, talking and, and, and uh, sharing with, because it wouldn't have been small talk. It would have been intimate talk. It would have been joyful talk. Um, so she regretted and felt disappointed that she had spent all that time just on small talk with an acquaintance. And really, in our relationship with God, we can be that way. We can miss the, the fullness of the relationship that God offers us because we, we take too small a view of what God is doing in our lives and what he is calling us to. We just end up having an oversimplified idea, particularly about salvation. And let me test this out on you and see if you agree. I think most of us, when we think about salvation, we think about Jesus dying for our sins and providing forgiveness. And because of that forgiveness, we are promised that when we die, we'll go to heaven. And in the meantime, uh, we've got a friend in Jesus, uh, someone we can call upon to answer our prayers if we're in a terrible situation or if there's a health problem. But really, if that's the extent of our Christian faith, our beliefs are way too small. Uh, we, we have oversimplified what God is doing in our lives. And because of that, I think so many of us end up with a Christian walk and a Christian way of life that is filled with duty and a sense of obligation. That we go to church out of a sense of, well, God wants me to do this and I owe him. And because I owe him, I guess I'll try really hard to be a good person. And I'll try real hard to avoid those uh, bad behaviors and sins and vices. And I'll just grit my teeth and try to be good as much as I can, but I'm not necessarily happy about it. And that's just terrible. If that is our Christian walk with Jesus, and I think, unfortunately, many Christians do live their lives that way. They look at salvation as something God has taken care of the sins of the past, and because that past sin has been taken care of, we have a future to look forward to where we'll be taken out of this big, big bad world, this wicked world, 
and trans transported to God's perfect world without sin. So we concentrate on the past and the future, but we neglect the present. And in the present, God is doing something. He is at work in our lives. He has an abundant life prepared for us. You know, some evangelical Christians offer the solution to an unfulfilled life uh, as this. Invite Jesus into your heart. Well, let me submit that that is too tiny a space for Jesus, to invite Jesus into your heart. Our perspective on what God is doing in Christ, if it's limited just to our individual heart, is way too small. In a way, it's like uh, the poem by John Galfrey Sachs, and I'm not going to read the poem itself, but it's about six blind men and an elephant. And these six blind men don't know they're in a room with an elephant, but they're stumbling around and they touch different parts of the elephant to try and figure out what's in the room with them. So one of them walks into the side of the elephant and stumbles and thinks uh, that's a wall. And another one touches the tusk of the elephant and thinks this is a spear. And another one grabs the trunk, the wiggling trunk of the elephant and thinks, this is a snake. And another one um, grabs the knee of the elephant and thinks, this is a tree. I can wrap my arms around this. And then the other one who touches the ear thinks it's a fan. And the one who touches the tail and grabs it thinks it's a rope. And the lesson here is we can each have just a little piece of the gigantic thing God is doing, but miss the full picture, the great plans God has for us in Christ. We don't want to miss the big picture. When something is God-sized, I'll fully admit it's, it's hard to take it all in. In our scripture reading for today, Paul's prayer in Ephesians 1, and I'm looking at verses... 3 through 14, what he's doing here is he's attempting to express every bit of what God is up to in our lives. He is trying to wrap our minds around the vastness of God's work in our life, that he is assembling a people for himself and gathering us into Christ. And when we're gathered into Christ, life is completely different. And it's completely different here and now. It's not just about what God has done for us in the past by forgiving our sins. It's not just about what God's going to do in the future, moving us to that perfect place where there is no sin. It's about what he's doing right here, right now, while we're living and breathing, while we're moving from year to year, Unfortunately, so many of us wasting time and missing by this much the vastness of what God has in store for us. Here are these, uh, the writing of Paul in Ephesians chapter 1, starting in verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his goodness, his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he was made known to us. He has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, 
having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we who were the first to set our hope on Christ might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. That's a lot to take in. It truly is a lot to take in. And I think that's why, as Christians, we, we miss the big picture. Let me paraphrase for you what I just read. Maybe hearing it in different words will also help you to digest this big picture that Paul is, is praying here. He's telling us that we have been moved in Christ. In other words, where we were, we're no longer, we no longer are. Now we are in Christ. And because we're in Christ, we're blessed by God. God blesses us. Because we're in Christ, God chooses us. He, he's made us his special people with a special purpose. In Christ, God affirms we belong to him. We are sons and daughters. We're now family members of the Most High. In Christ, God emulates, I'm sorry, <laughs> let me repeat that, let me say that again. In Christ, God eliminates the barrier between us and him. In other words, those past offenses that were in the way between us, he's eliminated. Those are no longer an issue, so we can have connection with him. In Christ, God lets us in on his plans and his purposes, so he reveals to us his heart, his wisdom, and his plans. In Christ, God joins all things together in heaven and on earth. In Christ, he extends his power to us, and in Christ, he gives us the Holy Spirit as a down payment or as collateral, as a promise to let us know that there's more to come. That's the future, the future blessings. And really, this list is trying to express to us the grandeur of salvation. We don't want to have a small view of salvation. It is grand. It is vast. And it's even too big for my sermon to cover. So I'm only going to scratch the surface here. But it's way more than a ticket to heaven. It's a relocation. God has decided that where we were wasn't good for us. We were refugees in a ghetto of sin. And what he did is he relocated us and transported us to a new environment. And that new environment is called in Christ. That's what Paul keeps repeating throughout this passage and throughout his letters, is we are now in Christ. It's a new environment. And because we're in new surroundings, we have the possibility of new behavior, new characteristics. What happens is there's a, a gradual change because we have changed, God has changed our surroundings. So we start to overcome our sin habits that we once had. Now, I know this can be slow because cellular memory, our body memory, and our culture surrounding us really do pound in the ways of sin. But in Christ, we have the ultimate good influencer. He is our model and our teacher. What he shows us is what it would be like if human beings were exactly like God as we were originally intended to be. We were created in God's image. So if we become more and more like Christ, by his influence, by being immersed in him, we would no longer be as self-protective, looking out to protect ourselves from hurt and harm, and we would no longer be self-serving, looking to satisfy our desires, our wants, as priority. We would be restored 
as beloved companions of God, just like Adam and Eve in the garden. And we would have a freedom and a willingness to join with God in his good work. Through Jesus, through Christ, we see what it is to live as the image of God. And as Paul says in Ephesians here, we are enabled to live lives that are holy and blameless before God. And again, that's in the here and now. This is real life. Real life as God has made it for us. This means we're on the same page with God now, not at odds with him. We're in unity with him. We, we start to grow and learn to love what he loves and that our hearts are broken for what breaks his heart. We love people the way he loves people with all of his heart. And we're participants in his work what we get to experience in this position of being his beloved is a love relationship with him. And it's the one he intended from the beginning. It's the reason he created human beings is so that we could unreservedly um, and deeply receive love from him. You know, we say God is love. We need to remember that. God, from the very beginning, has been love and created the world in order to express that love. What happens as we get on the same page with him is we both, God and us, give ourselves to each other in such a way that we go out of our way for the sake of the other to please and serve each other with joy. It's a two-way street. It's not simply God having pity on us because we were miserable sinners. And he says, um, look at those pitiful people I created. They're helpless. I need to do something about this and make sure that they can get to heaven. No, it's not that at all. He wanted to have a relationship with us. And that relationship starts here and now. So my hope as we go into the new year that we can help each other along the way to see the bigger picture and then live into it. Because it's just not a matter of letting God do his work in us and we just sit around passively. No, if he takes away the power of sin that once was our boss, we now have the capability to be on a level with God where we can work with him and also work on ourselves with his help, with his tutelage. You know, if Jesus is our model and our teacher, then we're the students. And our job is to look and see what Jesus is teaching us and showing us and walk in the ways of his character so that we grow and grow into the likeness of Christ. Yes, God planted that in us. He created us to be that way initially, but we marred it with our rebellion. And we submitted ourselves to sin and allowed sin to take over that role of bossing us around. But now we look to Christ. We see who he is. We listen to his teaching. We follow his model of prayer and devotion to God, of caring for others. You know, if our worship in this past year has been boring or filled with a sense of duty, or if our prayer life has been stale and flat and maybe even frantic at times when we're in trouble or crisis, that's a sign that we've missed it by this much. We've missed what God has in store for us. Why don't we follow Paul's example here in Ephesians? And we can even refer to his prayer here in Ephesians chapter 1 as a model for our prayers. Praying the praises of God for what he has done, how he has moved us into a new location, a new environment, placing us in Christ. And our prayers are lifting words of worship and glorification to God. And as that seeps into our hearts and in our minds and in our lives, 
we will start to see the bigger picture. So in this new year, maybe we simply need to repent of having too small a view of what God is doing with salvation. And we need to help and encourage each other to walk into and enjoy the abundant life in Christ. Amen.